Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on Forza Horizon 4 building a Morgan 3 wheeler to take on our rally stage. Yes, this was the most requested car, so we're gonna give it a try. Be honest, not holding out a huge amount of hope for controllability. It'll be madly fast accelerating. Controllability is going to be the issue. I would expect, at least, in, <laughs> in all of this. So, it can get all-wheel drive, which is one of the rules of the... That's engine swaps, we'll get to that in a minute. But we can get all-wheel drive. I, I mean, yeah, it's only going to be three-wheel drive, but that's better than nothing, basically. So, we will we will do that. Uh, well, I said, we'll come back to the engine, because I'm not sure how the PIs are going to work out on this. We are going to have the world's piddliest front bumper. Look at that, or front splitter. There's some downforce coming from that, I think. And also the world's piddliest air dam at the back. But it's better than nothing. So that we will have. Tie-wise, I'm presuming we can get rally tyres on this. Uh, indeed, we can. Uh, in fact, does this... Ah, that's interesting. This gets vintage race tyres. I mean, it is a modern car, 2014. Uh, probably the most modern car to get the vintage race tyres. Not that it matters to us at all. I guess, you know, well, the car's, you know, vintage style, if you like, but we're going to be on rally tyres. Uh, regardless, we cannot do anything about tyre sizes, so what they come as is what we're stuck as. I mean, the rear ones are okay sort of size. The front concerns with, I mean, just turning, turning grip, shall we say. The plus point for the car, of course, it is insanely light, but... Uh, actual overall grip is a little bit of a concern. And I think I'm going to want to do handling bits here before we start worrying about uh, power. Uh, ooh, okay, we don't get rally suspension on the car. That's just going to have to be left stock then. That's just going to have to be left stock. Uh, this is going to be insanely light, as I said. 1,100 pounds. It's a very light vehicle indeed. It's a very light vehicle indeed. Uh, engine time. Now, we have two options. We have the 3.2 i6 or we have the Turbo Rally. I'm leaning towards the Turbo Rally. Keeps the weight down. And we've got a little bit... There's a little bit of sort of playing around with PI we can do with said engine. Uh, we can take the restrictors off. What do we go for first is the question. Camshafts. Do we go displacement? Make it up to a 2 litre. Sure, let's go for that. Let's go for... Ooh, okay. Maybe A stage of turbo and then some de-restrictors? Possibly. No, this is the fun... This is a real fun and games little session here. So we can get it... Oh, we can get it with one PI. <laughs> can we go any better than that? Uh, that's... 472 horsepower like that. That's 480 horse... I don't think we're going to get it better than one PI, to be honest with you. Um, unless, if we were to go that and then the first stage of restrictors off, nope. But <laughs> I was, I, I say I was, I wasn't sure we were going to see this uh, get to the top of S1 class until I saw, because uh, I had one built and I'm not sure what I had one built for, uh, but I had an A class one and it's, uh, oh, hey, 499 horsepower, perfect. There is a way to get it to the top of S1 class, 500 torque as well. Uh, yeah, with the turbo rally engine getting buffed, this also does get the i6 as well. Being so light, all-wheel drive, off-road tyres uh, will do the job of getting it to the top of S1 class. I mean, power-to-weight ratio in this is immense. Power-to-weight ratio in this is absolutely immense. Which is alarming, because the rest of the car is unlikely to be immense when it comes to the grip side of things. But we will spend... actually not too expensive. Not too expensive at all on our <laughs> Morgan three-wheeler. I mean, this really could go either way. This really could go either way. It's unlikely to be great dealing with the sand, I would expect, all things considered. However, acceleration had better be mighty in this car, with such a huge amount of power and so little weight. Yeah, it is going to accelerate itself towards the next death-defying corner very rapidly indeed. So, we are here, ready on the, well, our pseudo start line for the run through the beach ready stage. As I said, I have really not got any idea what to expect, other than some ferocious levels of acceleration out of this car. I drove from the house down to the start line. It is bonkersly quick. So bonkersly quick, in fact, the front wheels like to come off the ground uh, anywhere with remotely fast corners. Now, that probably shouldn't be too much of a trouble out here, let's face it. Uh, good God, it's basically sunk. That's how deep the sand is and how little the Morgan is. Look at that! <laughs> Literally, it's 
It's literally sunk. My fears about the front end not really wanting to get turned, pretty accurate. Uh, the other thing that we might see the car struggle with is putting its power down out of these corners. There is just not the grip from the tyres. We're probably going to have to... Oh, that's a little bit too much side. Sliding through there, a lot of wasted time. Uh, yeah, there's not really the grip from the tyres, and it's missing a wheel compared to everything else. Oh, that's only just right. We've got to drive this car very differently. <laughs> this car is not going to be a throw it around and hope for the best. It doesn't really respond very well to that one. This is going to have to be a lot more calm and composed uh, than anything else. I don't like, you can get away with the Demon, the Volvo and the like. You can really chuck them about here. And they were fine with it in the sand. The Morgan, I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful, like that, for example. Like that. We're going to have to just ease the car around through here. It will look less spectacular, but I think it's going to be the way. Otherwise, I'm just wasting like that first section. We wasted so much time trying to get going even out of corners. That's not where I want to be. Suspension is not going to enjoy that one all that much. It's 106 miles an hour. Brakes pretty good. we will get slowed down for the next corner. Now, on to the beach. The long beach turn we go. Oh, that's a lot of understeer through there. That's a lot of understeer through there. And then followed by lots of understeer, followed by lots of oversteer as we wander a little wide. Oh, very wide, in fact. Coming up the oh, up shoots towards our wiggly, wiggly bends. I think someone reckoned we should call this... I, I like the name Sandy Snake down here. It's a fairly apt name for the... Uh, for that section of track. Oh, we're going to take out a lot of fences. This, this run is being a little bit crap. It's, it's kind of a learning experience with the car here. It's a learning experience with the Morgan. We definitely lead. Whoa! That's a really big flight! And we've rolled it. It's fine. It is the first roll on the series. <laughs> okay. Maybe a little less speed across the jump. I think important lessons were learnt. Little teensy tiny bit less speed over the jump is a very good idea. I mean, it's a 212. It's very slow. But lessons were learned. That's what I'm going to take away from it. As I very much expected, this car is terrifying to drive. <laughs> it accelerates like crazy and has very little grip to go with it. The plus points are at least the brakes do a very good job of slowing it down. Being so insanely light, uh, the brakes good enough to stop the car from... Because we never really go that fast around here. It's difficult. This circuit is a difficult one to, uh, to get right. But you are never really going more than about 110 miles an hour. It's probably the fastest we've seen. We're not, not likely to see much quicker than that. So we're going to go for a different approach this time around. It will look less spectacular, but there's still going to be some places where we might end up having to grab a handbrake trying to try and get the car turned in. But less sliding around, more actual control from the car. Oh, yeah, like slow it down there. Maybe we'll I'll probably still tap the handbrake a little bit just to try and help. Not Again, I want to tap it enough just to get the back end turned, but not so much that the cars actually start sliding. Oh, although through there, we're going to go for a little bit of a wide line anyway. So, technique I've used for various things in various areas. Although there was a little bit too much. That was a lot of sliding, but we got it through control at least. Uh, oh, I don't want to fight with the fences because the fences... You can get away with knocking them a little bit and not cost yourself too much time, although in a very small light car, knock them a little bit too much. I'm still grabbing the handbrake too much down there. Uh, that's going to cost us a fair bit of time there. It doesn't take much at all to excite the rear of this car. Still struggling. It's just the narrow section, the technical section, that it is a bit of a faff to get the car through. We're going to run wide out there. Don't really want to be out that part. That's, we got away with that. At least we kept a wheel on the ground for most of it. Good God, it's so fast down that back straight. Where you can unleash... When you can unleash the power of the Morgan three-wheeler, it's ridiculous. Although when we hit that wooden post, it twists the car. Now we've got massive understeer mid-corner. Can we now unleash the acceleration up the hill? We can. That's almost 100 miles an hour coming up the hill. It's finding bumps that we've never had to worry about before because it's going so fast. And admittedly, because it is so very, very light. Now, down the snake we go. Try not to get bounced around too much. And this is where we then go and proceed to lose the time that we gain in the acceleration zones. Uh, this is a little bit of a scary prospect. I'm not really sure how I'm going to be best to take this jump other than maybe have a little bit of a lift just because I don't want to jump as far as we did last time. I feel like that's not actually going to be conducive to a good run. Oh, we've got fighting it slightly as we go onto the tarmac. Now we can run towards the line. It is immense amount of speed as it flew its way. It was not that calm and composed across the line. I'm going to say that much game. Uh... <laughs> 209.2, it's still the slowest car to have run. We've gone better. I mean, it's going to be competing with the Unimog. 
It's going to be competing with the Unimog. I don't know whether I can find a couple of seconds. There is one more run for me to try and tame the mad contraption that is the all-wheel drive Turbo Rally Morgan three-wheeler. As I said, I'm looking for about two seconds if we are going to not be last on the grand table. That might be difficult. I'm not going to lie. That might be very difficult to achieve with this car. I'm going to give it a damn good try, though. Uh, we're going to try a couple of different a couple of different things on this run. I'm going to be hopefully neater and tidier. I'm going to just try remembering to shift up sooner as well. Turbo Rally Engine, of course. Uh, not as bad as it used to be in the old Forza games, but uh, you want to make the most of the power band, if you like. Oh, slither and slide our way through there. Now, again, it's going to look less spectacular. It might even look visually slower, but I'm hoping it's going to work when we put it all together at the end of a run. I mean, there's going to be an element of moving around. We're on sand through some of these long corners. The car is going to move about through there, for example. Oi! <laughs> so, Nice little transition through that part. Then we go into the fiddly section. Morgan's okay at the higher speed stuff. It's, it's round here where you really notice the lack of grip, shall we say. Now, that's actually quite nicely done through there. Keep the car around that corner there. Didn't end up running out too wide, which is nice. Make a turn. There we go. Onto the back straight. A little bit sideways onto the back straight, but I think we can get away with putting the power down nice and early. Be a little bit more sideways than I would have liked, but... Never mind. We'll break a touch early, perhaps, down... I'll say a touch early, yeah. We're not quite up to 113 or so miles an hour. We saw a previous run, but... Still got to 105, and um, we'll make the corner neatly. And this is all about the exit, if we can manage that, because I can't really carry the corner speed. Make the exit here good. Jump on the power. Watch out for the bumps, though. I'm going to go early on the brakes to try and uh, negate... Or try to stop the bumps from launching us well wide of the corner. Still struggling a little bit with that understeer through the next turn. Oh across the hill for the first part. That's not really where I wanted to be. Maybe put us in a little bit of trouble. That final kind of main corner, if you like, around the hairpin we go. Now, the jump is sketchy. This is the only car where I'm actually going to have to have a little bit of a lift just to kind of settle the car, because uh, I really don't want to be going flat out, not with the lightweight nature of the car, how far it flies. There we go. We're on to the tarmac now. Run towards the finish line. It pretty much takes off across the line again. We can't even have a chance to look at the speed before, or the time before we crossed it. Ah, oh, it's a 208.5. Ah, oh, we got a second. There's just not much more in that. No. <laughs> there is just so little control. I said so little control. It's the low speed stuff. The low speed stuff, the front end just refuses to do what you want it to do. It will not get turned in the technical bits. And that's a problem on a highly, highly technical rally stage. The acceleration is immense. The acceleration is immense. And it is the first car to ever fall over when we... Oh, we've actually spawned by the castle as well. How lovely. Yeah, it's the first car to ever fall over on the rally stage. That jump is incredible from the car. Uh, but, unfortunately, yeah, it is not so... I say not so fast. It's a mad contraption, and perhaps it is closer to the rest of the leaderboard than you might expect. It is going to go last. It's a second down on the Unimog. It's a fair bit down on the likes of the Fiesta, the Bentley, the MGB. And we're certainly talking... Oh, we're getting on 10 seconds off the Dodge Demon. It's a handful to drive around the course. But... It was always like to be, and that's what you guys wanted to see. Uh, as ever, with this series, uh, leave a comment below with what vehicle you would like to see run next time out. The most liked comment, if the car I can get and will fit in within the restrictions of this series, uh, I will run through the course and we will see what might be able to beat the demon. For now, we shall have some celebratory donuts because the first car to roll on the rally stage is a special honor that though is going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching and until next time a goodbye